Let's take a look at exceptions and try and catch. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at exceptions and the try and catch statement. So overall, like the previous two tutorials, we're just going to make a very tentative look at exceptions and the try and catch statement. So we're just going to make a new exception. So in our Kalpenjo package or in your package, we're going to make a new class. And we're just going to call this the test exception right here, just for the sake of argument. And what we'll simply do is we will extend the exception class right here. So what I will actually add here are going to be two different methods or, you know, actually two different constructors in this case. So the test exception constructor and the uh, with out anything and then with a message here and this is the idea is that uh, we've seen a couple of examples of exceptions before array out of bounds exception the class uh, cast exception things like that and we can of course make our own exceptions with our own stuff now of course in this case we don't have a program so really we can't really have an exception here in this case but what happens is that if you have a method where an exception might be, you know, present. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have an example. Might be a little bit of a crude example, but that's fine. So this is just a method that checks for zero, basically throws a an exception when the number zero is passed into it. So we're going to say if number is equal to zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to throw new test exception, test exception right here. And then we're just going to say number, number is zero. Or something like this. Now, what you will see is that this will be marked as an error because we actually have to add the exception to the method signature. Because the sort of compiler and whoever calls this method has to know, hey, hey, this might, you know, throw an exception if something bad happens. So we can prepare for this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do this following. We're just going to call the check for zero here and we're just going to pass in the I. So I've already prepared the scanner right here. And and what you will see is that, oh, you have to add a, you know, an exception because now we're calling an exception and we have to add it here as well. Totally fine. We're going to see that we actually don't necessarily need to do this once we uh, put in a try and catch statement. But for the time being, we have to put this in as well. And we're just going to call this. And of course, now I can pass in a number, let's say one. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens. Totally fine. I pass in a zero. We're going to see exception in a main thread at this exception number is zero. So now we can see that my own exception actually fired, which in this is really only important in like bigger projects, right? Where you have different fail states and stuff like that, where a custom exception makes sense. Otherwise, you can also just throw a normal exception and pass in a message as well. But how can we sort of, you know, like in general, first of all, right, when it comes to failure, well, the code failing, you want it to fail as loud as possible. I'm actually going to copy over the comments here that I've written. But in general, you want the code to fail loud, meaning you don't want a bug somewhere to be like unnoticed for like six months. You would rather have the entire program, you know, go absolutely insane, have like insane exceptions and warnings and like all sorts of met uh, method messages basically in the terminal or in the run window because that's way better than basically not having that. So what we're going to say is we're actually going to make a Z here for the next inch just for the sake of argument. And then we're going to make try. So try and then curly brackets. And inside of there, we're now going to call the this. So check for zero with the Z pass in. And then we're going to make a catch an exception here, exception E. And then we basically can do something about this, right? So we can do something, something about this exception, for example, right? When this is caught and we can do something about it, usually in most cases, uh, first of all, we just want to, you know, basically call it exception and then just print this out, e.get message, right? So we're just going to get the message of this and we can add something to this as well, which is called finally. So you can see I put in finally and then the curly brackets already um, they're basically pre-generated here. And this is basically, we're doing something here that is going to happen, uh, that is happening regardless of odd or not, right? So it finally happens every time. So let's just copy this over, control C, control V. And let's just say something like, for example, just finally, there you go. And then we're actually going to do the following as well. We're going to take this and we're just going to say here, this happens always. Ah, interesting. Okay, so everything that happens after the try and catch is still going to go through absolutely normally, right? 
So this is the cool thing about the try and the catch here. If we have a zero in the first one, what you will see is that the program ends. It's over. We're done. An exception was thrown. It was not handled correctly. The program just crashes. If the exception is handled correctly, so in the first one, I'm just going to put in a one. And in the second one, I'm going to put in a zero with the exception that is being thrown. Look at this. Or exception, the finally is called, and then this happens always, is also called. So the rest of the program continues to function perfectly fine when, as long as the exception is handled with a try and catch here. And also, if I weren't, you know, if I wouldn't call this here, then you can see this actually grays out. I don't even need to use this up here because the exception here is basically handled. So this, once again, is very hard to really see, okay, where could this be useful? Where do I have to use this? Do I have to even use this? Usually not, but it is something that is still very important to at least have seen once and to sort of understand, okay, an exception is thrown when, like the name says, there is an exception to the rule, right? If you were to, for example, divide by zero, that would be an exception and stuff like that. So, but like I said, you can make try and catch statements here and basically make sure to, well, handle those exceptions well. Now, this is also something you're going to learn when you're basically trying stuff out. So that's sort of an idea, but hopefully this, you know, was something new and was useful to you. Learn, you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.